Praise the Lord and welcome to another dynamic broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. Hi, I'm Bishop Ernest Johnson and I want to welcome you into the studios and the living room of the Jeter TV television network, jetertv.org, family television with power. Let's give the winds a mighty blow. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus is coming back again. Amen. And so at this time and this point, we thank God for you tuning into this broadcast today. I'm just excited because we're teaching on the series, amen, the elements that make a thriving church, the elements that cause or that are in a thriving church. And we want to look at those elements today. Amen. We're sharing them with you. We've already done two broadcasts and this is the third, amen, that we want to share with you today. Amen. And so I just want to just say, let's give the winds a mighty blow. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus is coming back again. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. I'm excited about getting into this word right now. I just want to pray, amen, and pray for all of you that are watching right now, amen, and we're here in the studio, and we thank God for our, our myself and the TV crew, amen, and we're here to share a divine word from God with you today. Call your pastors, call your ministers, those that are building ministries, and see these elements that are in a thriving ministry, amen, as we go to the history book of the church, which is the book of Acts, the second chapter, amen, and a lot of people say, oh, he's going to preach Acts 2.38, of course, Acts 2.38 is part of Acts chapter 2, it was the very first altar call in the Bible, the very first opening of the church, amen, a lot of people say, I want to open the church doors, but you have to read what happened when they opened the church doors, the 12 apostles opened the church doors, How did people get saved? How did people come to Christ? After they came to Christ, what did they do? Amen. So if you want to build a church, understanding that Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That means that whatever is coming against you, you are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, it was about going into the temple, amen, and and dealing with the priest who went into the holies of holies. But when Jesus was on the cross, he split the veil of the temple to allow us to go into the holies of holies and make intercession, amen, for ourselves and to pray for ourselves and to pray for our families, amen, and to make direct contact with the Lord, amen. And so that's what happened when the veil rent in the temple. So in the Old Testament, uh, we would go to the temple in the New Testament. Guess what? We are the temple. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, he that defiles his temple, him God will destroy. Amen. And so we are not to defile the temple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our bodies are now the temple or the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so a lot of you, amen, have put Jesus out. And the Bible says, he he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if I knock, I will come in. If you open up, I will come in and I will sup with you. Amen. And make my abode with you. And that's what Jesus wants to do today. He doesn't want to come in and you kick him out, come in and you kick him out. He wants to come in and he wants to stay there. Amen. All right. So I want you to, uh, I'm going to pray for you right now. And we're going to pray. And I ask you to pray with me. Amen. For me as I pray for you in the name of the Lord, because we need each other. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that are watching this broadcast right now. I thank you, God, for those that are in the studio. I thank you, God, for those that are in the church, the sanctuaries all over America. Father, in the name of Jesus, we acknowledge that you are Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless and touch each and every one that is watching this broadcast right now. Father, heal every sick body in the name of Jesus. Break every yoke in their life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, heal their bodies, God. Lord, we rebuke sicknesses. And we command healing in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, they are healed. And Father, we ask you to meet every financial need, God. 
There are those that are facing evictions, facing repossessions, God. And we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would reach out and touch them right now. Meet them right where they are. Somebody standing in the need of being filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Father, shower down the Spirit upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. Put families back together, God. Lord, raise up people out of the hospital in Jesus' name. And we thank you. We praise you for your healing virtue, your financial provision, O oh God. And we thank you for your people right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Don't forget to pick up my new book. Amen. God's Hollywood Preacher. Amen. It's a bunch of pages of miracles. Some famous people you'll recognize. Some unfamous. Amen. But they're known by the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did miracles in their life. I want you to get this book for a love gift of $25 or more. You can cash app us. Amen. You can call the number that's on your screen or you can go to gtv.org in the right upper right hand corner. There's a donation button and type in that and, you know, put in your donation, your love gift. Amen. To help keep Jesus is the answer on the air around the world. Amen. And get this book and, and read it and be blessed by it. Amen. And so get your book today and don't forget your free uh, bottle of oil. A free bottle of oil and prayer cloth. We want to get that out to you immediately. Amen. It's absolutely free. If you want to give a donation, you can. But if you don't have anything, call and the prayer counselor will set you up. Get the oil to attract God's blessing to everywhere you apply it. Healing, miracles, and get the prayer cloth. Cast out demons. If there's darkness and demons in your house, you take this rag and put some water on it and wipe it down and wipe down shoes and wipe down demonic oppression in your house and God will break those demonic forces that are binding you. Amen. Get it today. Just call and ask the prayer counselor for it and we'll even pay the posters. You can give a donation if you like to. Amen. But we don't require that for the oil and the, and the prayer cloth. All right. Let's go to this important message from one of my brothers. Amen. From London, England, as he shares with you how you can support the Jeter TV television network. God bless you. If you have been blessed by the ministry of Jitter TV and Bishop Johnson, we would love to hear from you. For prayer requests and donations, please visit us online at www.jittertv.org or call our prayer counselors who are standing by to take your prayer request and donations 24-7 at 310-637-7086. Thanks in advance for your prayers and financial support as we continue to change lives around the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Welcome back to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. For those of you who are just joining the broadcast, my name is Bishop Ernest Johnson. I pastor the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church and World Television Ministries out of Los Angeles, California. Amen. And I am the bishop over 45 churches around the country. Amen. And a bishop, overseer, some of them. And over 200 ministries that have been trained out of this church, amen, that have gone into other ministries to help them build, amen, the kingdom of God. We're about kingdom building. We're about soul winning. Soul winning and kingdom builder building are the two uh, uh, main qualities of the Jesus is the answer ministry. We want to tell the world that no matter what your problems are, Jesus is the answer. All right. Well, God bless you. We're going to the book of Acts chapter two, and we have been studying about the elements of a thriving church, the elements of a thriving church. And uh, just to go over a few things we talked about in Acts two, one through four, how the church must have uh, the Holy Ghost. The church needs the Holy Ghost. OK, now I'm going to take a, a little pause here and I'm going to bring this thing out because the Holy Ghost spoke to me last night when I he woke me up out of my sleep. And I was asking the question, can you have a church without the Holy Ghost? Can you actually have a church congregation, a church meeting without the Holy Ghost? And God spoke this to me. He said there were two churches in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 10, which was the church of the Italian band. Amen. 
the Italian church, they were praying, they were giving, they were giving alms, they met together, they were having a prayer, and they didn't have no Bible study because the Bible, the New Testament scriptures weren't there then, so they were going off the Old Testament scriptures, but did they have the Holy Ghost? No. Then in Acts chapter 19, the Bible says, and Paul, finding certain disciples, asked them the question, had you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? So they were believers, they were disciples, they were in some type of church, but they did not have the Holy Ghost. Therefore, we that have the Holy Ghost cannot judge these folks that do not have the Holy Ghost, but our job is like a palace. The, see, this is revelation. See, the Bible says Apollos was eloquent and mighty in the scriptures. Okay? So Apollos was preaching and Apollos was teaching. And the Bible says Achilla and Priscilla went over to him and they didn't rebuke him and told him he didn't have a right to preach. Amen? There are many people out here that are preaching. Some are preaching for all different kinds of reasons. Paul talked about it. He said, some preach to add affliction to my bonds. Some preach for filthy lucre's sake. He said, some preach for whatever reasons they're preaching. He said, nevertheless, Christ is preached. So even if there are people out there preaching Jesus for money, Jesus is still being preached. If they're preaching Jesus for fame, Jesus is still being preached. That's why you have some pastors in the pulpit living a nickels worth of dog meat, but they're preaching Jesus. And what did Jesus say? If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. So there are people out here preaching Jesus that do not have the Holy Ghost and are still preaching and seeking the truth. And so we that have the truth, like Achilla and Priscilla, when they saw Apollos preach, the Bible says he was mighty and eloquent in the scripture, which means what? He was preaching the truth, which means what? He was preaching the power of the word. And so the Bible says that when he was finished, they pulled him to the side. They did not rebuke him openly. They did not say, oh, he's a fake preacher. They did not say, oh, he ain't got no power. They did not even say anything negative about him to the public. They went to him. They pulled him to the side. And the Bible says they expounded to him a little more perfect and preached Jesus unto him. Therefore, I'm quite sure Apollos went and was baptized in the name of the Lord and filled with the Holy Ghost. Baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. See, the reason a lot of people have called the apostolic church an occult, because we have constantly said, these people ain't saved if they're not baptized in Jesus' name, they're not baptized if they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says that we're only responsible for what we know. Amen. And the Bible says that God uh, uses you according to what you have and not what you have not. So if they don't have the truth of the word that we walk in, it does not mean that God has rejected them and that God ain't using them. Amen. But what it does mean is that God has given us a little more truth that we need to do what? Take to them and expound to them a little more clearly. But let me tell you something else. Some of these folk, amen, who have churches know how to build a church. They know how to deal with people. They know how to talk, you know, deal in psychology. They know how to treat people. They know how to love people. It's a shame for us apostolic folks, amen, for us Pentecostal folks who are filled with the Holy Ghost and people coming to our church and we treat them like trash. We don't treat them like they're in love. So then we go to these other churches and we put them down. I remember one time I went to Fred Price's church. I got out of my car in the parking lot. Every person walked by. Welcome to Crenshaw. Welcome to Crenshaw. We're so glad you're here. Every person that walked past me welcomed me to Crenshaw Christian Center. Then when I went to the front door, they said, are you a first time visitor? Yes, I'm a first time visitor. We want you to come sit this way. They put, they walked me to seats sitting in the front. Or All I'm saying to you is that we uh, boast about having the truth, but do we have love? Amen. Love should be our motivation for truth, not to just prove that we know more than that person and we got more power than that preacher and our church is more saved than this church. No, Jesus said, by this shall all men know ye are my disciples by the love ye have one toward another. And as I'm talking about all of this, things we need to have a thriving church, we got to have love. 
If we don't have love in the church and we don't love on people coming in the house of God, they're not going to want to come back to our churches. And we come up, well, they just don't want the truth. That's a lie. There's a lot of people that want the truth. They want the truth, but they don't want to have to tolerate with some of y'all old uh, uh, preachers and nasty mouth running your mouth mean mean as the devil saints of God they, they got to put up with you amen and they don't want to put up with you being mistreated they're coming from broken homes they're coming from molestation they're coming from gangs and drugs and all these different people and all these different elements that they think love them, but they should come in the house of God and they should feel the love of Jesus Christ. Not just because you give them a cup of water, but you, but you hug them, you welcome them with a smile. Amen. Some of us come into church, we don't even get down and pray. We bring all of our problems in the church. And then when people come in, we nasty to them. We look at them like they're crazy. We, we side eye them and wondering why our churches don't grow. Amen. You go to some of these other churches, it's all love. It's all love. We just love you. We just don't want to court. We just love you. And the churches are growing like crazy. And we say, well, they don't have the truth. But let me tell you something. The Bible says, "They that the father seeks after the father seeks after those who worship him. How in spirit and in truth, Amen. The spirit of God causes us to love one another. We cannot have a thriving church if we don't have a loving church. We cannot have a thriving church if we don't have a compassionate church. We cannot have a thriving church if we don't have a church that loves and teaches and preaches the word of God. Amen. How are you going to be excited about your church and everybody you bring visitors in, everybody running them out? The visitors don't want to come back that you brought, that you prayed for, that you asked God to bring. And because the pastors mean, because the church mothers are mean, because the ushers are mean, because everybody mean as hell, your work, your efforts are in vain and you run these folks away. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the way. Love you have one toward another. So saints, we need to check our attitudes at the door. And some saints, I've been to churches, I'm, I'm apostolic, I baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, but I haven't been to some churches where the, they think that, that the apostolic folk think they more than everybody because they baptize in Jesus' name, because they got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, because they don't wear no makeup, the women don't wear no makeup, and everybody wears dresses and all that, so, so people come in who are seeking God, and we turn our noses up at them. Oh, we got we got to change. If we're going to win souls, we got to change. Everybody's saying, well, we just old fogey. No, we're not old fogey. We have the truth of the word of God. But do we have it with love? Do we have it with love? Or do we get up and preach like this preacher, Geno Jenkins? I mean, uh, what some of a lot of stuff he's saying is the truth. But what is what spirit are you telling the truth in? Are you telling the truth in to beat somebody down? Or are you telling the truth to change somebody's life? Are you bringing them in to beat somebody down? And what happens, these kind of churches, because I, I grew up in that kind of church. These kind of churches draw people who want to be controlling. They draw people who have an attitude. They draw people who want to get back at people who are vindictive. And they want to use the gospel of Jesus Christ as a cloak of maliciousness instead of a, a cloak of love. Love. Uh, of, I, I think it's uh, one, force, uh, one of the scriptures says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And that's what we're missing. Love. Love. We're messy because we don't have love. Amen.
I'll never forget my son one time. We went to Denny's restaurant and a, a veteran walked in the door. He had a um, bionic leg. He had a bionic arm. He had a bionic eye. He had a, a, a just, he was a rebuilt $6 million man. And he had all this. And my, and my son was like, Dad, Dad, look at him. He got a metal leg. He got a metal. I said, shh, son, son. Sometimes we got to act like we don't see those things because the Bible says love covers a multitude of fault. Love covers a multitude of sin. Amen. When you look at people through love, you try to overlook these frailties that these human beings have so that you could do what? Show them the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus loves unconditionally. He don't care about your race. He don't care how fat you are, how skinny you are, how tall you are, how ugly you are. He loves you unconditionally. And the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So when you do what you do, do you do it out of love? Do you preach out of love? Do you preach with the love of Christ? Or do you preach to be vindictive? Do you preach to show that you know more than everybody? Do you preach because you're mad because you were molested as a kid? Do you preach because you want to get back at the world? Well, you need to be delivered from that. Amen. And understand we have to have love. Amen. Why are so many of these false religions growing like crazy? Because they make people feel loved. They make people feel apart. They make people feel important. They come into church. How do we make them feel like they're nothing if they're not baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost? That devil is a liar. Amen. So God revealed to me in the script in the scripture text, Apollos was mighty in the scripture. A killer Priscilla took him to the side in love. The Bible says that the Italian band were praying. They were praying. They were doing alms. They did everything they can. So God spoke to Peter, amen, to go to the Gentile church. That was the first Gentile church recorded in the word of God. And when Peter went to them, the Bible says when Peter started preaching, they were into the word so much that they were sitting there in Acts 10, 44. And they said, while they heard the word, they began to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Nobody laid hands. Nobody did nothing. Nobody did that on the day of Pentecost because they were in one place and on one accord. Well, here comes the Gentiles now and the Jews, even though Jesus told them to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, they kept it among themselves. It's not love when you cannot preach to white folks, black folks, people out of your culture, people out of your nature. It's not love when you can't preach to everybody the same gospel and feel the same way about everybody. You can't be saved. You cannot walk in the love of Christ and be a racist. You cannot walk in the love of Christ and you a man only want to preach to women. Because you have a lust problem. That's what it really is. Or you a man that want to only preach to women. A man want to preach to women. A woman that only, only want to preach to men. Because you have lust problems. Or you, you, you have these homosexual feelings. And you want to preach to men. And you want to preach to women. God wants you to preach to every creature. And show the love of Jesus Christ. You cannot have a thriving church without a church full of love. Amen. A church full of love. It's got to have love. Amen. That's the basis of the whole gospel is love, love, forgiveness, redemption. That's what the gospel is all about. Amen. I just got to read one scripture. Uh, our time is up. Amen. And so uh, when I when I talk about uh, love, uh, I'm going to go down to Acts chapter two, uh, verse uh, Acts chapter two. Uh, verse uh, 37 and 38. These three elements that you need to be saved. I got to wrap this up here. But the main key is love. The Bible says verse 37. Acts 2 37. Now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart. Love. They were motivated by love. And said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren what shall we do? Then Peter. So Acts 2.38 is not a sermon. Acts 2.38 is not a doctrine. It is a response to somebody's heart hearing, believing, and receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't preach this. What we preach is Jesus and him crucified. And then when people respond and ask, what must I do to be saved? This is what the Peter and the disciples said. Then Peter said unto them, repent. 
And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, plural. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and unto all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked, untoward generation, this generation whose heart is untoward God. You need the love of Jesus Christ. You need the love of God. Lift your hands right now and say, Lord, come into my life. Bless me to find a church full of love. Bless me to repent. Go down in Jesus' name for the remission of my sin and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And the love of God will be shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson today. Join us next week. We're going to continue the elements of a thriving church. All right. God bless you. We're praying for you. Pray for us. Sow that seed today at Cash App. Amen. Money sign J-I-T-A-9-9. J-I-T-A-99. Sow your seed today on Cash App. Zelle, whatever, however you want to do it, call the number. Amen. And also, we need your most urgent prayer request because we are constantly praying. All right? God bless you. You listen to the announcements. And this is Bishop Ernest Johnson. On behalf of all the saints, partners, and friends of this great ministry, we say to you, no matter what your problems are, Jesus is the answer. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.